Here's one of the very first full color science images to be released by JWST. This is a planetary nebula called the Southern Ring or Eight Burst Nebula, about 2000 light years away from us, and it shows the spectacular remnants of a dying star. We even got two shots of this nebula, which is shells of gas and dust being given off by the bright dying stars in the center. Both of these images were revealed at the same time by the Space Telescope Science Institute, the self-confessed nerd hub for Webb. Let's start with this image from NERCAM. So this is taken using near infrared wavelengths of light. We have the bright star in the center with the big diffraction spikes. Although surprisingly, this isn't the star that's causing all of the gas and dust, but it is stirring things up. It's around 100,000 Kelvin and plays only a supporting role in forming this nebula. It interacts with a second star that's pretty hidden here, throwing off shells of gas and dust and using its intense heat to stir this nebula up. You can clearly see here different layers of ejector in the huge orange clouds, each layer representing some interaction that threw off a load of mass. I love how much texture and depth there seems to be in this bright orange cloud. Do remember that since these images are taken with infrared light, which we can't see, the colors here are really false colors, meaning the IR light is sort of translated into visible colors for us. There is some science here, moving the wavelengths up using filters that preserve some of the science. Things like the longest wavelengths being made red and the shortest wavelengths being made blue. But there's also a bit of an art here as well, using certain colors to emphasize certain features or processes here. We want to show off the science, but we need it to look good too. It's not a big deal, it's just something to remember. Back to the huge foamy orange cloud. This foaminess is molecular hydrogen being blown off by one of the stars. The blue in the center is hot ionized gas being heated by that same dying star. These stellar spotlights are bright light from the star shining through holes in the cloudy nebula, exactly how we sometimes see the sun shining through clouds on Earth. This central blue region also shows where some of the light isn't able to escape from near the star. We can see it's denser gas and light isn't able to break through as easily and hence it's darker than the orange gas around it. While the main focus of this image is the planetary nebula of course, don't forget to look behind it. In the reddest areas we can see further through space and actually see distant galaxies behind the nebula. In the reddest areas we can see through space and actually see distant galaxies behind the nebula. This is just because Webb is so powerful and so good at collecting light, it's literally impossible for it to take an image of blank sky. Don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining, and I really recommend taking this image and spending some time searching through all the distant spiral and elliptical galaxies that dot the scene behind the nebula. Do let me know if you managed to pick a favorite, I haven't got one yet. Moving on to this other image we got. It's the same object, but this image is taken in mid-infrared light using the MIRI instrument. There are a few differences we can notice. Firstly, the colors are different. In this one, the outer blue shells represent hydrocarbon grains that Miri can see. They seem to have a similar structure to the orange molecular hydrogen in the other image, and that's because molecular hydrogen can form on these hydrocarbons, meaning they tend to group together in the same ways. Webb is very good at seeing hydrocarbons, and it sees a lot of them, and they all contain, of course, carbon. These are very large and stable molecules that we can see all the way back to the start of the universe. They might even be how carbon reaches habitable planets, by hydrocarbons being blown off in all sorts of cosmic events just like we see here. Perhaps the most exciting difference between the two images though are what we can see in the center. We always knew it was a binary star in the middle, but we've never seen the companion in so much detail. Here, the second star is cloaked in a red coat of dust. This is despite the fact that its tight orbits and interactions with the brighter star should have ejected all of that material from around it, creating the shells of debris we see. The answer as to why this is, is currently unknown, and it's one of the interesting questions we have as a result of these images. It's this second star that's dying and really creating this planetary nebula. The other star is just helping out. In the image, we also see again a load of distant galaxies in the background. But in particular, notice this radial looking streak. No, it's not part of the nebula, but rather it's a huge background spiral galaxy that we're viewing edge on. We can even see dust lanes and a bulge, which is pretty cool in my books. I hope you're all pleased with how cool this looks and are enjoying everything that's come out of Webb in the first release. Subscribe for loads more Astro videos and be sure to check out my other videos about all of the images released alongside this one. I'm sure there's something for everyone, from the birth of stars right back to the oldest galaxies in the universe. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!